Four candidates, four visions for Baltimore City's future. In less than a month, voters will decide who should lead Baltimore City. Hello everyone, I'm Jason Newton. Welcome to 11 TV Hill. With the primary election approaching, the four top candidates for Baltimore City Mayor made their pitch to voters at our debate. Incumbent Mayor Brandon Scott, former Mayor Sheila Dixon, prosecutor through Vignaraja and businessman Bob Wallace all shared their goals for the city's future. In Mayor Scott's case, he touted the recent drop in city homicides. Preventing gun violence was our top priority, which is why I created the first ever comprehensive violence prevention plan in Baltimore's history, and it's working. We had a historic reduction of 20% in homicides last year, and we're expanding that this year with 32% reduction even further. Last year. Scott also noted his office has not had any scandals, an apparent reference to his opponent Sheila Dixon's previous embezzlement conviction while she was mayor. Now, Scott took time to address this with voters in a, an opening statement. As many of you know, in the course of my time in office, I made a mistake. I undermined the trust that you placed in me and interrupted the work that we did to reduce crime, to clean up the city, to educate our young people. The truth is Dixon made clear that she is experienced running the city and knows how to change city offices to make them more effective. Former Deputy Attorney General Thiru Vignaraja called his opponents, quote, politicians when discussing vacant housing, arguing that the problem hasn't improved as they've claimed. This is remarkable to me that people think that the vacant housing problem has gotten better in Baltimore. The way that politicians convince you of that is by misleading you about the statistics. It's true. We only have 13,000 vacant houses in Baltimore this past year. That's down from 14,000 vacant houses in 2015. But what city politicians don't tell you is that the number of vacant lots has gone up from 16,000 to 20,000. Businessman Bob Wallace told voters that he's not a politician either, just a man who escaped a childhood of poverty in Baltimore through hard work and education, something he says he wants to pass on to the city's young people today as juvenile crime rates rise. I will use the same approach that my daddy used in, in Cherry Hill raising five boys, and that is a belt and a carrot. Daddy made it very clear. If you broke the rules, there were going to be consequences. It doesn't matter how old the person is. If they're old enough to commit the crime, they're old enough to do the time. Of course, what you have just heard was only a small portion of that debate. Also, this past week, we hosted the three candidates for Baltimore City Council president. Education, the role city council should have in the public school system, was one of the big issues for incumbent Nick Mosby and challengers Zeke Cohen and Shannon Sneed. I think that we need smart leadership uh, to really push this thing forward. And it's about taking local control of our school system like we've taken it of our police department. The school board should come and report uh, to uh, and get confirmed through the, through, through the uh, Baltimore City uh, Council. Uh, as it relates to the CFO, they should report to the finance director of the city of Baltimore. It's time that we stop punting the football and acting as if this is a dual relationship with Annapolis. We got to start young. With Kerwin, we should have universal pre-kindergarten starting at age three. We know children's brains do the most amount of development ages zero through five. On the other end of the spectrum, we cannot continue to graduate children into poverty. Every single child in this city needs to have an either college or career plan. We have to have the parents involved to be more uh, to be involved in our schools to let them know because we do no matter what want students in their own seats because we know when they miss school that's a huge deficit and so I want to make sure that one we increase our parental engagement number two is that we make it accessible for our parents and you say well how do you make it accessible for our parents stop having parent teacher conferences between the hours of three and five. Joining us now with some insight on these two debates is Goucher College pollster Malia Cromer. Good to see you. Hey, Jason. Thanks uh, for having how me. How you been? Pretty but good. <laughs> let's talk about that debate. Do you think, particularly with the mayor, uh, do you think any minds were changed because of what they heard? It's always a little tough to gauge like how much of an impact overall a debate can have. But I do think the debate in general is sort of indicative of the tides we have seen turning in favor of uh, incumbent mayor Brandon Scott. Sure. Uh, we have taken two looks at this race uh, in our, our partnership polls with the Bar Baltimore banner. Yeah. And what we've seen is certainly Scott was struggling back in uh, back in September. He was behind Dixon in the head to head and he was pretty far underwater in terms of his job approval rating. And not only that, people's view of the, the direction of the city yeah. was not that great. Sure. Uh, we 
fast forward uh, six months later, we take this poll um, in, late, uh, in April, and what we see is now Brandon Scott's at 40% yeah. uh, of the electorate. He's now a, 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 a in a tight race with Sheila Dixon. Um, and not only that, his job approval ratings have improved and his favorability ratings have improved. Yeah, so let's start here. Let's just start the first question you're saying. Who would you vote for today? That's we'll right. show you those numbers. You're saying Brandon Scott uh, comes in at 40, followed by the former mayor, Sheila Dixon. Uh, there it is there through Vic Naraja at 11 and then Bob Wallace. Uh, at three, and as you were saying, you, a few months ago, those numbers may not have looked like that. Well, a few months ago, um, through Vignaraja and Bob Wallace weren't in the race either. Yeah. And so the entrance, I think, particularly of Vignaraja's candidacy, although it does not look like he has made any real considerable ground, uh, he has perhaps, I think, um, split up some of the anti-incumbent votes sure. uh, that Sheila Dixon was, I think, hoping for back, you know, six months ago to get all of that. Yeah, and your polls may not account for this, but his visibility, I'm guessing, during the uh, the collapse of the Key Bridge and being in front of the cameras a lot may have given people a chance to see him at work, perhaps. Oh, uh, we asked specifically about this. Okay. Um, and so uh, the, our poll was conducted right in the aftermath of the collapse of the Key Bridge. We asked uh, Baltimore City residents to, how well did the uh, leaders respond to it? Um, overwhelmingly, uh, individuals say that Mayor Brandon Scott did a excellent or good wow. job in his response. And that certainly, anytime an executive can demonstrate leader uh, leadership in a time of crisis, mm -hmm. it only bolsters their um, electoral uh, advantages. We just saw some of the candidates for Baltimore City Council president as well. Yes. You looked at some numbers on that as well. Who would you vote for today? And you ranked the three. Well, you didn't rank them. You showed us the numbers of the three. And right now, the incumbent uh, is behind Zeke Cohen. Zeke Cohen with 27, Nick Mosby with 23, Shannon Sneed with 17. What do you make of that? Right. Um, so Nick Mosby has certainly struggled in terms of his job approval ratings. Yeah. Uh, we, unlike Brandon Scott, who we've seen a clear bump happening from September until now, he hasn't received that same sort of uh, bump. And it's, I think, you know, incumbents have to have strong job approval ratings if they hope to get reelected. Yeah. Uh, Zeke Cohen, uh, the councilman from the first district, has run a really well-funded campaign and a campaign that has been on the ground mm -hmm. for months. Uh, Shannon Sneed is unfortunately for her hindered by the fact that she doesn't have a huge campaign war chest um, and she has a really high percentage of individuals who say they just don't know her. Sure. So unable to determine whether they, they have a favorable, unfavorable opinion of her. Now, if she can change those fortunes in the, in the next few weeks, we might see that race, I think, it be, being truly competitive between the three candidates. Can someone make up that kind of ground in that short amount of time, do you think? It's really, di it is difficult. She's, yeah. I think, certainly in a better position than uh, Vignaraja and Wallace are and on the mayoral side. Yeah. Um, but it is really difficult it's and it's very hard and it's because and listen statewide name recognition is difficult yeah. we've seen that at the senate level and citywide name recognition it's difficult to build these every voter knowing your name it's yeah. hard yeah you asked about favorability we talked about that for a bit let's start with the mayor uh, and we, we've ranked them strongly disapprove disapprove and approve and right now i mean from judging from your numbers people approve of his job it's it's slim i mean it's close yeah. uh, but 29 percent yeah, they are divided um, on the job The job that Brandon Scott is doing as mayor, which is a turnaround from what it was back in September sure. when uh, more people disapproved than approved. Uh, more, uh, more importantly, I think, is this favorability rating, like whether they like you or not. Yeah, yeah. So his is at 55%. That's a strong favorability rating. I, but it's important to note that Sheila Dixon still has a, that same unshakable base, and mm -hmm. she's still popular among uh, Baltimore City voters. And so I think the dynamics have certainly changed with the entrance of a candidate in Thruvig Naraja who has run several cycles. People do know him. Yeah. He's not viewed as favorably as the other candidates. Um, but that is certainly splitting up the um, any sort of anti-incumbent vote. It, it kind of shows that in some cases, at least, Baltimore is a very forgive and forget kind of city. That they've, you know, they've allowed things to sort of pass, time go by, and maybe it's a good candidate. Same thing we asked or you asked of approval rating when it comes uh, to city council president. Let's take a look at that when we talk about Nick Mosby. Right now, that same 29 we saw for uh, the mayor is 29% disapprove of Nick Mosby. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's not a great place to be as an incumbent. We, um, Nick Mosby certainly has faced some personal life challenges over the last six months. Um, and again, uh, Zeke Cohen has presented himself as certainly a well-funded uh, candidate who has been able to garner support across the city. Uh, an issue, I th or certainly a dynamic to look out for in the city council president's race is the role of race. Yeah. Um, uh, the area in which Zeke Cohen needs to make some, some inroads considerably um, are, uh, is among black voters. Sure. So I think in the next couple of weeks, we're gonna see that sort of outreach 
outreach from both the candidates. Okay, okay. And well, as well as uh, see if Shannon Sneed is able to make up some ground as well. One minute left. I'm only asking this because you wrote a book, book on the man. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Larry Hogan entered this race. Sure. Uh, he calls himself an underdog, but the numbers kind of show that, that people don't see it the same way. It's a, it's an interesting rise as he comes into the race. Right. So um, the former governor is sitting right now at our pre our poll taken a couple weeks ago at around a 62% favorability rate. That's par for the course for this man yeah. who has been in um, over the last decade. The issue that he is facing is that while he may be personally popular, he has to run against or run run as a Republican um, who could change the balance of the, of the, of the U.S. Senate. Sure. And that is, a, that is a big issue we looked at among Democratic voters is maintain, for Democrats to maintain control of the Senate, particularly with you know the, uh, the idea of Trump and perhaps a national abortion ban mm -hmm. looming. But that being said, anybody um, nobody should discount um, a, 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 a twice-elected statewide official um, as a strong contender for the U.S. Senate. On to May we go. Good On to, to see you. Go. <laughs> Thank you for always coming by. We appreciate it. And you can watch the debates in full, the WBAL-TV app and streaming on Very Local. Also, watch our questions with the candidates on today's key issues. Again, that's in the WBAL-TV app. Just tap Commitment 2024.